Hello. Thank you so much for listening to Grounded in Maine today. My name is Amy, and I am speaking today with Nicole Karen. Hi, Nicole. Hi. How are you? Hi, Amy. Good. How are you? Good. Thanks I for am, having me. Yes. Oh, I'm so thrilled. I'm so thrilled this worked out. Um, I am so glad that I ran into you at Replanova. Um, it feels so weird that we live so close, but we, I know, we never, never met know. until just this year. Yep. Yep. That's crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I'm going to admit first off that I'm terrified of bees, um, <laughs> but really anything that flies. <laughs> but be bees just come closer to me. So they're at the top of my list. I get it. I get but it. I can totally appreciate the work that goes into beekeeping and the great things that they do. So how did you decide to raise bees? Um, well, you know, I always kind of wanted to be a beekeeper when I was a kid. Um, and beekeeping wasn't as big as it is today. So I always, you know, I wanted the little hive and to wear like the, the suit and, um, but it never really went anywhere. And then um, a couple of years ago, I had the opportunity to start. So I did, I, um, I picked out a couple of hives and educated myself and just went for it. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, <laughs> that's really amazing. And you wanted to do it all along. Like that's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's I've cool. always wanted to. Yep. Even though I was terrified of bees, mind you, I've always been terrified of bees. It's been um, quite an experience over the past couple of years with them. Wow. trying to get myself out of that. <laughs> wow. I, I was stung once when I was like eight and I can tell you exactly where it was on the top of my left arm. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. It sticks with people for a long time. <laughs> it's traumatizing. Uh, gosh. And so, um, let's see, I'm going to, I'm going to, I do have a couple of questions. So I, I had, well, I have a small series of questions. So I had posted on Facebook, um, that I was going to be talking to you. And I asked if any of my, of my people that are listening had questions. So Carrie, um, Carrie, a friend of mine asked how much time is involved in that? And then are nights and weekends enough? Um, so beekeeping, you know, a lot of people do do it on weekends because, you know, they work full time and it can be done on just the weekends. Um, but sometimes you really need to get in there during the week um, because there's things happening in the hive. Like, you know, they're starting to think about swarming or you've got to feed them every day because we're in a drought or um, they need treatments, mite treatments because they can get mites. And there's so many different things happening in the hive that sometimes it needs a little bit more than just the weekends. Okay. So it could, it could technically be weekends, but there are instances where you would need to be on the ball and just available. Yes. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. And then how much time would you say that you dedicate to it? Um, I would say, so last week, I'll go with last week. Right now I'm feeding my bees because of the drought and trying to build up stores for the winter because they need stores to survive the winter. So I wanna make sure they've got enough. So I'm feeding them and um, giving them treatments last week and um, taking boxes on and off. So I think probably about six, seven hours last week. <clears throat> And when you say stores, is that stores of food? Yes, which is their honey. Okay. Yep. And yep. then, okay, so the honey is the food. And then you said you were saying taking boxes off? Yep, because, you know, this time of year, you've got to start like slowly taking them down in order to get them through the winter um, because you, you don't want to give them too much space in the winter. When they get cold. They can get cold there's so many things that can go on in the winter it's it's pretty hard to get them through the winter um this past lunch winter was my first and i got them through which is a difficult thing for a new beekeeper yeah. um, but i got three hives through the winter and they did amazing um but yeah 
uh, winter's winter's a tough one, especially last year, but they made it. <laughs> awesome. That's great. How, how did you, um, how did you get them through winter? What do you do for winter? Um, so like what I do, all, all beekeepers do it differently. Um, there's no right way or wrong way. Um, I, <clears throat> a lot of people do upper ventilation. I don't. I give them what's called a quilt box that's filled with um, shavings that you might use for like a rabbit cage or something like that to help absorb the moisture in the hive. Mm -hmm. And then I wrap them in that like that thick pink insulation that you can find at Home Depot. Mm -hmm. And then I wrap that with that silver like it looks like bubble bubble wrap insulation. I wrap that around them and um, I even have like a little monitor inside wow. that can tell me through my phone how much humidity is in there what the temperature is in there and i can tell from it going up and down what's happening in there if they're too cold you know if you know it'll get really cold and i'll know that they've you know something bad is happening in there like they're they've passed away oh. you know anything wow um and then That's once cool. you, so th I would guess that that would be recommended that that thermometer or sensor thing. Yeah, a lot of people don't use one, but especially, you know, it was my first winter. I wanted to know exactly what was going on wow. in their hives. So I believe that. Yeah, but I'll definitely be using that again because it was pretty helpful. OK, uh, and then I think I think it was Carrie also that asked um, what what is the like startup cost? Um, I would say the startup cost is probably around like five, $600. It depends on, you know, what kind of hive you're buying. Um, I myself bought two Hoover hives, which are hives that are dipped in beeswax instead of you having to paint them. Um, they're on the cheaper side. I think it was about 250 or $300 for one. Okay. Um, and then, you know, you've got to buy your bees and because of inflation, of course, that's gone up as well. Uh, I think my bees were one package of bees was about $125, $150 at the time. Now I would say it could be around $200. Hmm. Um, so it can be, it can be pretty expensive to start with. Right. Um, and, you know, it also depends on through the year, you know, what's going on with your bees. If you have to buy mite treatments, um, those can be expensive too. Um, but yeah, I want to say like minimum $500. Okay. All right. And then um, let's see. So Kate asked how much space or land is required to keep bees? Um, so there's no, where I live, there's no requirement, um, that I have ever found, mm -hmm. but every town, you know, you would have to check with your town office to see how much space you would need. Um, you know, I, like in Portland, I think that you can have like a half an acre or a quarter of an acre. I know someone that has a quarter of an acre and he's got like four or five hives on it. <laughs> wow. So, so yeah. And of course you also have to think about your neighbors. Always mm -hmm. think about your neighbors because the bees, especially if they have a swimming pool, because the bees really love chlorine. Weird. Yeah. Very weird. But yes, they will join you swimming in your pool. <laughs> mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't like that. So you've got to definitely <laughs> check with your surroundings and make sure your neighbors aren't um, allergic to bees or completely terrified of bees. Right. <laughs> wow. Because they do move around. Like they get oh, out of the hive during the day. They leave the hive continuously during the day and they can fly between, uh, some people say up to two miles, some say up to three. You know, I think it's like, you know, about three-ish miles. Wow. That they'll travel looking for food. Okay. Yeah. No, there's food in their hive. Yes, because they have to keep storing it because they they take the honey and the pollen that they store and they make food for the babies oh. that are in the hive. So they have to, you know, constantly replenish. Gotcha. 
Okay. Yep. Um, so Nicole, have you been stung yet? Oh yes. Oh yes. Many a time. <laughs> my very first experience with getting stung since i've had the bees was when i got my first package someone told me and i should not have listened that it's completely safe when you first get your bees to um not have to wear your bee suit because they're so calm <laughs> well my mistake was i listened oh and i shouldn't have um, because I was still pretty afraid of them at that time. So I'm surprised at myself that I actually did listen. Um, so I went to go put the bees into their new home and they come in this little, like, they call it like a bee bus, but it's pretty much um, made of wood and screen. And in the center and the top, they put a can, kind of looks like a soup can, and they put holes in the bottom of it and it's filled with sugar syrup so this can had no holes in it so these bees were very hungry and they just traveled from georgia oh my goodness so they were angry or hangry um <laughs> so oh, when i put them in their new little home they said who's <laughs> who's this lady let's get her right and they did is so it, I, it your fault what's that is this your fault that we're that we're like this um that they chased me <laughs> they were mad at you right yeah this is this must be your fault you're the reason that we're oh in for such, sure yeah. for sure but yes i ran across my yard screaming like the bees were inside my clothes so i'm oh, trying gosh. to hide behind the, the, the bushes while i'm like trying to rip my shirt off and yes so to any new beekeeper i highly recommend that you always wear your suit mm. <laughs> and gloves yeah. <laughs> Wow. Um, so I would think um, that if you were starting out, so I'm, I'm, I'm learning about this with chickens. Like I know when we first got chickens, we got them from like, we got them from Brooks Feed and Farm and, and yep. they come um, shift from, you know, wherever they come from. Okay. Yeah. And so now that I know more, I'm like looking elsewhere, like locally for chickens. Yeah. Yep. Um, and, I would think that if I, if I were to start bees, I would want to find a local bee person yes, and absolutely. like local to me, like close to me and like get those bees. And then I would think that that local person would maybe follow through and be like, let me just make sure that you get them in because yeah. Yeah. I can't imagine like how stressful that must've been. I mean, first of all, to not know what exactly what it was going to be like, and then to get stung. It was more yeah. than once, right? Oh, oh yeah. I oh, think I got gosh. stung about 12 times. That's insane. Yeah. And with my very first experience having bees, that was not a good time. Welcome to beekeeping. Right? Welcome to beekeeping the hard way. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, but I mean, yes, you can, you can get them from away, but I wasn't as educated with the bees at that time. Sure. Um, so I ordered them through um, a local bee company which gets them from Georgia. They travel to Georgia to bring them up here to sell to people. And these bees come from um, big corporations that truck all these bees out to California to pollinate the almonds. Mm. So when they bring them back, you know, they don't need as many bees. So they dump them all into this little bee bus and they ship them to all these beekeepers who want bees. Mm so you never know what you're getting wow. and you don't know how old like your queen is which is pretty important to know i think um because you know it depends on how much she can still lay how old she is there's a lot of factors that go into it um, and didn't you just lose a queen i did i did because it was my one of my georgia queens um, I had no idea how old she was, and now I'm assuming that she was probably three years old, and um, really you should requeen after you get a package from Georgia, mm. because you, you really don't know anything about this queen. Um, and I never did that. I just figured, I don't want to kill my queen. I'm just going to let her live out her life. Well, the bees decided you're not laying enough. It's time for you to hit the bricks. So, so they threw her out of the hive and I watched them kill her. It was horrible. Oh 
Oh my gosh. They ball her, like she'll be on the ground and they ball her and they heat up so much that they basically cook her. <laughs> it's very sad, um, but that's what they do. Oh my gosh. I yeah. thought that they like lived to serve the queen. They do, but when she's, she's no longer doing, doing her job, queen. she's like, you know, off with the head. <laughs> wow, that's yeah. intense. Yeah. So wow. I always recommend that, you know, anyone getting started in beekeeping, join a club, first of all, even before you have bees, join a club because they'll tell you where you can get your bees from. Local beekeepers sell nukes. A nuke is basically like a mini beehive. It's got five frames of bees in it and they'll sell that to you usually around $200 or so, but they're local bees. It's an overwintered queen, which is way better than having a Georgia queen because she's only used to the hot temperatures. Right. She's never seen a main winter. <laughs> right. um, but, you know, bees from around here have, and especially if that queen has already overwintered once, you know, that's, that's huge. It's huge, huge yeah. part in getting them through the winter. Wow. Yeah, that's a great yeah. suggestion too. I mean, and then you you might be able to find someone close to you who would yeah. help in that, you know, ease that first meeting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can, you know, joining a bee club too, you can ask for a mentor. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I had a mentor my first year and, you know, it, it was a huge help for things that I didn't already know. You know, I I would call him in a panic oh my God, I don't know what's happening right now, but this is what they're doing. Mm. And, you know, he would talk me off the ledge, calm me down a little bit <laughs> and then tell me, you know, explain it to me. And then I'd be like, okay, all right. Nothing bad's happening. It's just what they do. It's going to be okay. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> Phew. Um, I mean, it sounds kind of like sort of, sort of like having a new baby. You know, you don't know what everything is and yes. you call the doctor every five minutes. And so the mentor is like that person. Yeah. To, like you said, talk you down. Yep. That's, that sounds like a really important, a, like a really important thing. And, you know, whether a mentor or even just a buddy, you know, someone yeah. who's done it that can, you know, be there to support. That's amazing. I'm so, sure. thank goodness there are things like that. Absolutely. You know, I have my, my friend my friend, Mary, um, she lives in the next town over and her and I met, <clears throat> I want to say like almost two years ago and we bounce things off of each other all the time. And it's nice to have someone that you can just talk bees with because if like, I just called you all the time and talked to you about my bees, you'd be like, oh my God, Nicole, stop. <laughs> <laughs> not with the bees exactly so you need someone to I can't to help them. you <laughs> you really got to have somebody you can bounce questions off and you know just be there to comfort you when your bees are having a bad day <laughs> yeah oh my gosh yeah and you were I think that you were telling me that they have bad days they do they do like right now mine are pretty they're pretty angry right now, which they tend to be a little bit more angry in the fallish time because, you know, they're preparing for winter and, oh my gosh, we have to get so much nectar in the hives so we can make honey. And, you know, so the hives are crazy right now. So when I pop them open, you know, they, <clears throat> they all come out and the ones that want to get to me will just start pinging off of my veil. Oh my and gosh. And normally they don't do that. You know, I open up the top and they're calm. They look at me and I just do my thing. But this time of year, they're out for my blood. Oh my <laughs> oh. They're lucky I love them. Like my children. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, and you were telling me too, Nicole, that you had, um, you had nursed a, a hive. I did. I did. Um, I in call your it, first year, you nursed a hive. I did. Someone contacted me and said that um, there was a beekeeper that was now highly allergic to his bees. And um, I said, you know, I'll, I'll come take a look at them and see if I can bring them back home or what's going on with them. Well, this beekeeper didn't believe in mite treatments. 
<clears throat> and mites can be very dangerous for bees, um, varroa mites. And they came to the United States in the 80s and um, they've been attacking and sometimes killing our bees since then. Oh so you wanna make sure that you treat your hive or it can turn into what's called a mite bomb and they can get several diseases from these mites. So I checked the bees. I did what's called a mite wash to find out how many mites they had. Well, they had so many mites, I couldn't even count them all. <clears throat> and normally, you know, you do a mite wash and you might see two, three, four mites. And, you know, that tells you, you know, it might be time to start treating them. Well, there was, uh, I want to say upwards of 50 mites in there. Oh my God. They, they had a couple of viruses. They were pretty sick and losing bees pretty rapidly. So I treated them for almost a month straight to get them back to health to where I could bring them safely back to my apiary um, and they wouldn't make my other bees sick. Um, so I really didn't think that they would make it through the winter and the main state apiary inspector told me they're not gonna make it through the winter. They're too small. You know, they've just come out of all of these sicknesses and they're not gonna make it. Sorry, Nicole. Well, I proved her wrong. Aha! And, <laughs> and now they're doing quite well. Um, they're actually one of my stronger hives now. Are they the ones that took out the queen? Uh, no, oh. no, one of the other hives did, yeah. Um, but yeah, they're doing spectacular now. And I'm so thankful because they are the calmest bees ever. They're so sweet. I love them. They're my favorite. <laughs> that, makes, that makes sense though, because you spent a lot of time with them. Like, yeah. I, I know that I've had that with, um, you know, chickens and, and, yeah. you know, we do that with our pets anyway. You know, the ones that have, right. that are compromised in any, in any way we spend right. time with them and that bond is, is stronger. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Bees yep. are different, I guess. Huh? They start to recognize um, the beekeeper after a while and um they'll do they start to you know when the new babies are born babies. They will, their baby bees are the cutest things ever i don't care what anybody says <laughs> they have this like this yellow almost whitish hair all over them oh, they're just adorable i might be one of the few people that thinks that they're adorable but they really are and um, they have several jobs in the hive. And when it's their time to start taking flights to find pollen and nectar, they do figure eights in front of the hive so that they can recognize their surroundings so they know how to find their way home. Oh, um, and it's just that, I don't know, I find them so amazing and so fun to learn about. You'd be amazed at the things that they that they do in the hive and they dance to tell everyone else in the hive where they can find food. I mean, that's amazing. I, <laughs> wow. It floors me. Yeah, yeah. They're just have, you, have you taken like video or pictures of like baby bees or the... I think I might have a couple pictures of baby bees that I can send you. That would be awesome to share. Yeah. They're super adorable. Cool. I'm sure everyone else will think that too. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I like, so Carrie, Carrie and Kate are both really interested in starting up some bees. And so they were asking, you know, if it's even something that they could consider. Um, and how many, you said you started with three hives or two hives? I started with two. How many, um, how many bees are in a hive? It depends on how big the hive is. Um, if it's doing really well, there can be, wow, there could be like 60,000 bees inside of a hive. Oh. And when you get a package, there's, you know, probably about 3,000 bees in there. Wow. And once the queen starts laying the hive, you know, as long as nothing happens, like they get sick or anything, that hive grows very quickly. Oh, and holy. the bigger it grows, the more boxes you have to put on it. And, you know, and then they start bringing in the honey and storing the honey. And that's where you get your honey from. Oh, my gosh. So you start off with like 3000 bees in a package. And yep. then once the queen starts laying, it just multiplies like crazy. Yeah. Up to 60,000 in a hive. 
a queen can lay about 2000 babies a day, eggs a day. Yeah. A day? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh my gosh. Yep. Whew. Um, oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> so, um, I'm really curious about the honey part. So I've never seen a real hive. So I have to come over. I, I have know. to suit for you. No to, I, you've got a, you've got a suit for me though. I, think. I do. <laughs> um, I'm going to, I'm going to double up. Um, <laughs> but do you, have, did you get beeswax this year? I did get some beeswax. That's I did. very cool. Yep. I use it to make, um, lip balm and, um, candles and, um, what else do I make? My goodness. Uh, lotion bars, I call them all kinds of different things. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> and honeycomb. Like, do you eat the honeycomb? I don't. Um, I've never even tried it to be honest with you. Um, I do have a friend who loves it. So I gift her some honeycomb, you know, every once in a while and she loves it. She puts it in her lattes and, and everything. I, I don't know. It's just not my thing, I guess, but I do love the honey. Okay. Oh, it's beautiful, honey. Oh my mm. God. <clears throat> I just made some, um, elderberry shrub with Ooh. your, with your honey. Oh, um, just elderberries and vinegar and mm. honey. That sounds uh, really good. It's it's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I mean, I I feel I feel so dumb because I like do the bees just make the honeycomb and the the beeswax? Yes. yes. So they have bees have honeybees have pores that they secrete the wax from. <laughs> Sounds crazy, but then they take the wax and they make the honeycomb from that. Yep. And then the honey, they, they bring in nectar and they break it down and then it, it becomes honey. Once it's actual honey, they cap it over on the frame and then you can extract it from there. Those tiny little bugs, they do all that. Yeah. They're very, very smart. Like you would never think that they would be this smart, but wow, they really are. Hmm. It's okay. Super cool. And what are your plans for the future, Nicole? Are you planning to get more bees or are you going to no. make <laughs> some? <laughs> no. <laughs> right now I have three hives and a nuke um, where I am. The nuke is where my new queen is currently living just to make sure that that hive that lost their queen didn't raise their own queen because if I put my new queen in there and they've already made a queen, they will kill my new queen. Oh my gosh. So I need to be sure that there's actually no queen in there. I haven't been able to find her. So I don't think there's one in there, but just to be safe, um, cause I don't want my new queen to die. I love her so much already. <laughs> Aww. Aww. Um, so yeah, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> okay. So are you, are you going to be incorporating any new products with your honey or honeycomb or like do beeswax wraps or anything like that? Maybe I was thinking about making some of those beeswax wraps. Yeah, that's very cool. Um, so I have a couple of questions that are going to just sort of tie this into the sustainability, sustainability topic, I guess. So yeah. what, what would you say makes beekeeping sustainable? Um, I think, first of all, um, education. Um, I think that's, you know, where it starts. Um, to become a beekeeper, a lot of people don't educate themselves. And it's pretty major to educate yourself as much as possible so that you know how to keep bees so that they can become sustainable. Um, I took, you know, two college courses. I took classes from local area, um, like the honey exchange. Um, and I'm trying to think of, there's another one in the area too, but anyway. Um, so I educated myself as much as I possibly could before I got that first package of bees. So that's where it starts. Okay. Once you have your bees, you know, you've got to make sure that you're keeping them healthy. Um, 
uh, you're allowing them to grow um, with help from your other hives. So, you know, like if, you're, if your one hive needs a frame of brood, which is the babies that are capped over, you can move it to another hive to give them a little bit of a boost and, you know, and vice versa. Mm. Um, a lot of people will keep a nuke, like my nuke, as a resource hive so that they can give resources to their other hives, you know, to help them sustain. Um, you know, so those are some pretty major things in order to keep your apiary, which is what they call it, your, you know, your little beehive area. It's an apiary. Um, Yours is beautiful. Thank you. Your thank yard you. where you keep it is so beautiful. Thank you. You also have all those flowers, which has, they, it must make them so happy. Yes. Yep. I have probably about half of my garden. I make sure that I plant something for the bees and those plants, I don't cut those flowers because they're specifically for my bees so that, you know, when we have that drought, they still have a resource that they can go to, to sustain the colony. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. And so for, for those folks listening, just know if you are in the Brunswick area, Nicole also has a gorgeous farm, a little, um, she's, <laughs> she's a flower stand at the end of her driveway and she has the most beautiful flowers. There are a lot of dahlias right now and sunflowers. Yes. And what else do you have in your? Oh my God, I have so many. We'd be here for like a half an hour talking about my flowers. So colorful. You would have, to, <laughs> oh my goodness. But I, you know, my dahlias are, you know, my number one favorite. I have right now, I think I have about 35 dahlia plants, um, which is a lot because they have to be dug up every fall. Yes. Um, but they're so showy and beautiful when they're. Oh my God, I'm in love with them. They're so, so, so pretty. My favorite. I'll hook you up with some, some dahlia growers and you can, you know, up, upgrade your, you know, add to your collection. Um, okay. So, and then did I lose you? I think I lost you. Nicole, can you hear me? I, ah, there you are. My field is, uh, what happened? I don't know. It froze up. Oh no. It's okay. I can edit. <laughs> I can edit. Um, but okay. so, yeah, I have some folks that are um, dahlia growers and they have like thousands, thousands of dahlias. Oh my God. I need to be their friend. Ah. <laughs> I can <hook> you up. <laughs> <laughs> they can teach me more about dahlias. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're, oh, they're my favorite. They're fantastic. They're so beautiful. Yeah. And so beekeeping, as far as sustainability, also, I mean, it pollinate, they pollinate the flowers and they pollinate other things that, that help us to grow things for ourselves. They do. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. They do. Yep. Vegetables, gardens, you know, I think my bees probably pollinate anything that you have growing in your yard, you know, because they fly that far. Mm. Um, but yeah, my, my neighbor, she's trying to grow a flower garden and um, she loves when my bees come over and visit her. That's good. She knows that they're pollinating. <laughs> All right, good to know. I got your bees over here, Nicole. They're doing yes. their thing. She sends Thank me pictures. <laughs> yep, yep, she loves it. Cool. But I'm glad my bees can help out. <laughs> Very good. Um, and so the last question, just to tie everything together, uh, Nicole, when I say the word sustainability, what does that mean to you? Um, sustainable, hmm, like in general or for beekeeping? In general. In general. Um, I think um, in general, hmm, you know, homesteading, really, you know, being able to grow your own food and, you know, look for your food locally, like farms, farm stands, anything like that. You know, I think people need to do more of that instead of buying from stores and, you know, canning, right? I think you do some canning. I do a little. 
Yeah. <laughs> like with your corn. Uh -huh. That's sustainability. But yeah, anything like that, that's it's sustainable. And people really need to get into that a little bit more. Yeah, well, and we're so lucky with all the farms locally. Oh, we're so lucky. Oh, my God. And I go to all of them. <laughs> we have options. We do. Because oh, you're right. You hang out with Becky. So you must drive by Watley all the time. Yes. Yes. Yep. I love their little farm store. It's the so most beautiful. beautiful tomatoes ever. Yes. Yep. Oh, my God. <laughs> makes me hungry when I go by there. <laughs> yes. And they have great ice cream sandwiches. Just saying. Um, so if people want to oh, find you, Nicole, had oh my goodness, they're gluten-free. Some of them are dairy-free Oh, and they're all delicious. Mm. Highly recommend the chocolate bergamot. Oh, I know where I'm going this week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or the chocolate, the chocolate, chocolate, um, or I hear the coffee ones are really popular. Well, anything with chocolate is like amazing. So yeah um, and so if people wanted to find you and follow your adventures or you know try to contact you to see if you have suggestions for them like how how would someone how would someone find you um they can find me on instagram just under my name i don't have like a um a page for my beekeeping or anything like that but yeah they can just find me on instagram and if they have like your friends that are thinking about getting into it, they can find me and ask me any question. Awesome. I'm here to help. Yeah. And on Instagram, you're Nikki Cole Karen. Is that right? Yes. Nikki, Nikki Cole, Cole Karen. Okay. Yep. And I'm going to put that in the show notes as well. Um, but I think they can just type in Nicole Karen and I should come up. I think you're right. Cool. And you are on Facebook as well. Yes. Yep. Um, very cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for, for sharing all of this with us. I'm, I feel a little bit better about maybe thinking about bees someday. Yes. Uh, you'll have but... to come over and visit mine. <laughs> <laughs> Help you get over your fear, Amy. <laughs> maybe. maybe. But anyway, um, thank you again. I, um, I really appreciate all of this. And uh, like I said, I'm going to add all this information in the show notes and, and hopefully Nicole will send us some pictures of baby bees. Yes, I absolutely okay. will. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you again. Um, it's been thank wonderful. You. Thanks for having me, Amy. I appreciate it. Uh -huh.